Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship this second Sunday of Easter. Uh, real quick, I would like to remind everybody that I am doing, uh, I am available for uh, visitation and communion by appointment. Uh, I am trying to follow the guideline of that both the district as well as health officials uh, came out with. Uh, they prefer and strongly encourage that all pastoral visitation be done at the church uh, because you can maintain better social distance and it's way easier for us to sanitize that spot in the church where we met as opposed to uh, to you having to sanitize your house after pastor meets with you. Um, so I am available uh, by appointment. Just call and make sure I'm, I'm available even if you're, you want to come at that minute. And of course, that's the way we will we do communion as well. So uh, just let me know, and we will work it out. And make sure it happens. Are there any other announcements before we begin? All right. Seeing none, we'll begin with our opening hymn, hymn eight eighteen eight one eight. In thee is gladness. Beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven, heaven and earth. earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, which 
as I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am not sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of the Lord's mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with our hymn, hymn 474, Alleluia, Jesus is risen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. 
make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength, seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. He remembers his covenant forever, the word that he commanded for a thousand generations.
The first reading for the second Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 5. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put these men out for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Theodos rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about four hundred, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case I tell you, Keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice. And when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for his name. And every day, in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and praying, preaching Jesus as the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise, Praise him, all his angels. Praise, Praise him, him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise, Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created, and he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all the deeps, fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his saints, for the people of Israel who are near to him. Praise the Lord. The Epistle is from 1 Peter, chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
I invite you to stand for the gospel.
grace and peace be multiplied to you. Behold the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. See how great the love of God is for you. In the death and resurrection of Jesus, we find a profound truth, not only of who Christ is and what he has done, but also of who you are and why it was necessary. This truth gives us hope and comfort that the world cannot grasp or comprehend. And here, in the first epistle of Peter, we find a key to unlock that great mystery that is now revealed to us in Jesus. Peter writes to a people scattered among the world, the unbelieving world, a people who have been brought to salvation through faith. And it is by faith that they are now to persist facing trials of various kinds. They do not live and believe as the world lives and believes. And for this, they suffer. They endure all kinds of temptations, pressures, mockery, slander, persecutions, all for the sake of their hope in Christ. And so Peter writes to remind and encourage them of this hope and what already belongs to them because of it, all for the sake of Jesus. For they themselves did not earn or achieve this salvation, just as they did not choose or decide for it themselves. They were as dead in their sin as Christ was in the grave, even more than Christ, being as Christ, being God, could have raised himself, though in obedience he left that work to the Father. They, however, were utterly dead in their sin and could not perform even the smallest of good works, much less bring themselves to new life. We were in no better condition. And yet in his great mercy, the Father brought us to life in Jesus. Though we were utterly cut off from him with no hope of our own, he drew near in his word of promise, and through that word called us from death into life. This very word of forgiveness, life, and salvation created within us that very life-giving and life-sustaining faith, which alone brings us to its promised end of salvation and life everlasting. So certain is this hope, this serene and confidence dependent upon God, based on the unshakable certainty of the resurrection of the dead, which begun and guaranteed in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that from the very moment you were first brought to faith by the power of God through his word, you came into full possession of all that it has and offers. This is because you do not work to gain or keep it, but we simply rest in God's grace until our salvation is revealed on that last day. This is not only a work of God's grace, but also of his divine, almighty power. Dwell on that for a moment. The same God who created all things who spoke, and it was, who restrains the power of the stars and laid the foundation of the earth, who stretched out the heavens and set the boundaries of the deep, who sank the valleys and lifted up the mountains, who raised Jesus from the dead. This God, on account of your inability, had mercy upon you and brought you from death to life by creating and sustaining the very faith within you by the power of his word. How safe and secure then must your new life be if he has given it to you. What great hope we have. Hope that serves as the mighty energizing power for the whole life of those who believe. We need this hope, for we ourselves are conceived and born in the sinful flesh, 
and we still live in it. Sin continually stirs within us and rebels against God. And we still dwell in this fallen world which hates God and those who belong to him. That is why Christ's earthly life was marked with suffering and the cross. And so too we find our lives in him are thus marked also. But when we are grieved by various trials that come our way, we indeed can rejoice, knowing that the cross is the way and means by which God leads the Christian through this world into eternal life. These trials, Peter says, refine your faith and cause it to be found more precious than gold that perishes though it is refined by fire. Consider for a moment our present context. The world cannot understand why on earth the church would want to gather during the pandemic. It tells us that we should stay far away, not knowing that it is here we receive God's word which brings us faith and life everlasting, brings us the strength, strength to endure this trial and temptation. And as we face the mockery and the scorn, we trust ever more in Christ and strengthen in this faith. When we are grieved by the various trials that come our way, we can rejoice. Fire does not hurt the gold. It does not consume or diminish it, but it purges it of all the dross and it becomes pure and sterling. So too the fire and heat of affliction, of suffering, of distress and temptation and persecution purge away the old sinful self, and thus we are purified and strengthened in faith. As we endure from day to day in this living hope, we become more certain in our conviction and grow in our understanding of that divine wisdom and knowledge revealed to us in God's word. And we find in there the respite from the onslaught of the world and even our own sinful flesh. The final outcome of this endurance and faith is resurrection to eternal bliss. All who have been brought to and kept in that faith by grace alone and the power of God will at the last be brought with him into his glory. This is the end of faith, both its result and its conclusion. Here on earth we have communion with God only by the means of his promise and faith. But in his kingdom of glory, we will no long, he will no longer use the word to bestow his blessings on his saints, nor shall we need faith to receive them. But we, in fact, shall see with our own eyes the resurrected Christ, face to face. He will stand before us in unveiled majesty, and our heavenly bliss will comprise of beholding him as he is. It is toward this final bliss that all God's promises are oriented. When death will finally be overcome once for all, and in our flesh we will shall receive the promised inheritance that is now hidden and will be revealed. Scripture gives us some pictures of what that will be like, so we have a little bit of a concept of the glory of our inheritance. A wedding, a feast, sitting upon thrones, etc. But ultimately, this bliss of eternal life surpasses all earthly comprehension, even by the saints. Even so, through Jesus Christ, we now have a living hope and know the promise of God that we will live with him forever. With this, we can face any trial or challenge knowing that we are safe in his omnipotent care. Apart from God's grace in Christ, 
This sinful world has no hope in the midst of these trials, of persecutions, even of death. But God, through his Son, brings reconciliation and forgiveness of sins for all who believe by grace through faith that Christ is our Savior. In him we have grace and peace all the more. And may that peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, all earthly comprehension, bring you to life everlasting in Christ. Amen. I invite you to stand as we continue with our offering. Teach us to trust in your word and to believe with all our hearts, minds, bodies, and strength in Jesus Christ, crucified for our sins and raised for our justification. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God of grace, bestow upon your church your Holy Spirit and all the gifts that come down from on high. Grant to us faithful pastors who will preach faithfully. Sustain us while apart and bring your scattered church together again quickly. Give us boldness in our witness before the world and courage to speak your name without fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. God of power, give courage and strength to those persecuted for the faith and comfort the families of the martyrs. In uncertain times, keep your church from being tossed about by the winds of change. Keep the steadfast in the doctrine of the apostles and the faith once delivered to the saints. Help us to admonish those who have fallen away and restore with gentleness those who have wandered from the truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of might, counsel the nations and their leaders to act wisely in all matters. Bless us with faithful and just leaders who will protect the sanctity of life and defend us against all enemies, foreign enemies, and discerning citizens who use the gift of liberty for noble purposes. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God of love, teach us to love one another as you have loved us. Guide us to make manifest the love and, and strength of Christ to our troubled and fearful world. Deliver us from disease and everything else that would threaten our homes and families. Protect the police, firefighters, disaster relief workers, and medical personnel who attend to us, as well as the places where we live and work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. God of comfort, give your aid and relief to all who suffer want or need, to the sick in their affliction, to those troubled in mind, and those to whom death draws near. Heal and sustain them according to your gracious will, and preserve them in faith to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. prayer. God of hope, be with those who grieve the loss of a loved one. 
Point them to the promise of the resurrection and the gift of everlasting life to all who die in Christ. Deliver the, us from distractions that we may focus on your needful word and sacrament and so be found faithful when our Lord returns in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God of compassion, bless us with the good gifts of the earth and with the fruits of our honest labors and with kind and generous hearts. Accept the worship of our hearts and voices along with the tithes and offerings we bring in gratitude and thanksgiving. Look with mercy on the unemployed and open our eyes and hearts to the needs of the poor that we may serve them in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, give harmony and unity to your people, both in our various vocations before the world and in our common life at this altar. Help us to come again and receive with repentance the joy and joy, the gift of Christ's body and blood in this blessed communion, that we may be strengthened in faith and enjoy the gift of a clear conscience through the forgiveness of our sins. Comfort and sustain those who are unable to gather together this day before your sacrament. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O blessed God and Lord, hear the prayers of your people and teach us to trust in your will to answer our prayers with all that is needful and beneficial for all whom we pray. Through, our, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now we sing hymn 728, How Firm a Foundation, hymn 728. 